Good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Pete Will. I'm an account manager on Esri's Natural Resources team. And I'm very pleased to welcome you today uh, to this webinar entitled Building a Web Mapping Platform. Uh, during this webinar, we will look at uh, how, as, uh, how ArcGIS can be used as a platform for creating and sharing geospatial information products um, within the mining industry. Today's uh, presentation will focus on how the ArcGIS platform is improving business processes by providing web-based mapping tools and maximizing access to data. We'll be looking at how to share data and analysis products with your end users uh, with web maps. We'll also take a look uh, at how to optimize your mapping workflows, save time, and uh, improve collaboration uh, using fit for purpose web maps and applications. And our, our main goal today is to show you the value of providing your users a system that enables your entire organization uh, to make smarter data-driven decisions. And I'll be your host for today's webinar. Uh, this webinar uh, is and was organized in collaboration with the Esri Mining User Group, uh, the MUG, and a recording of this webinar will be posted on YouTube and shared with all registrants. Throughout the webinar, we encourage you to ask questions through the GoToWebinar dialog box, and uh, we'll try to answer as many as possible uh, during the webinar. But if we don't get to any um, questions, we, they will be answered in a follow-up email. In addition to myself today, I am joined by, joined by Matt Ballard, uh, Rachel Mikander, and Lucia Patterson. Matt's a solution engineer, my teammate on the natural resources team. Uh, Rachel is a GIS analyst, a cartographer, and a geologist with the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology. And Lucia is a GIS specialist and geologist with the Nevada Division of Minerals. So before beginning, I'd like to say a few quick words about the uh, Esri Mining User Group, or as I mentioned, the MUG. Uh, the MUG serves several purposes. It, it acts as a professional networking organization focused on geospatial professionals in the mining industry. And through the MUG, the community is able to provide feedback to Esri in a mining context. The MUG also works to coordinate seminars and networking events at mining conferences at the, and the ESRI UC. And, and finally, the MUG facilitates webinars such as this one, leveraging um, mining specific topics and uh, geospatial technology. The MUG has been in existence for approximately 11 years, a little bit more than 11 years, and it's made up of uh, well over 2,000 members. The membership is managed on LinkedIn, and I encourage you to join the community. So let's take a quick look at the agenda. Um, first off, Matt will give a presentation of Esri's approach and methodology for generating web maps, open data sites, and an overall enterprise GIS approach. That will then be followed up by a presentation by Rachel and Lucia on their respective open data sites providing them a chance to highlight the hard work and substantial work they've done for both the Nevada Bureau of Mines and the Nevada Division of Minerals. And then we'll wrap everything up with a question and answer session. So there's a lot of material to, to cover today, so let's go ahead and get started by turning things over to Matt. Matt, you with us? Yep, hey, thanks Pete. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And um, and again, yeah, thanks Pete for that introduction. So for many of you, I'm sure it goes without saying that maps are cornerstone to many of your mining workflows and, and they've been so for a very long time. Many of the earliest applications of GIS applied to mining and just about every single aspect of this industry has some geographic component to it. 
and maps are the common language that we use to communicate that spatial information. A scene like this one showing all these people huddled around maps making decisions is uh, hardly uncommon. People use maps at work ultimately to make educated decisions, but confusion can happen when maps aren't generated from your authoritative data and in an ever-changing environment where data updates daily, a map that was made last week or several months ago could be stale and somebody could be making poor decisions using it. This picture might be relatable to some of you. One moment somebody needs a map printed and the next they need it to be slightly modified and reprinted. And before you know, there's a backlog of one-off map requests and you might be scrambling to ultimately address all the different needs of the business. These methods of disseminating maps don't scale, and it's ultimately a, a reactive approach to GIS. And especially in a world that's plagued by a pandemic, uh, where huddling around wall maps, like we saw earlier, isn't always possible, how do we get these information products into the hands of end users? This is where WebGIS comes in. Many of you have likely deployed WebGIS in some capacity. WebGIS ensures that all users are looking at the most up-to-date data and provides a scalable way to deliver those information products to end users. Now you've got tools that enable everybody in the organization to interact with the GIS. And as a result, the role of GIS professionals has changed somewhat to now where they curate content, create web maps, and configure applications in a proactive approach to GIS that helps people have that authoritative data to make those intelligent business decisions. And these tools aren't reserved just for large organizations with big GIS teams, but, a bit for, uh, but are also available for organizations of all sizes and types. This system works by providing three sort of key components. First is a system of record, which is your authoritative data and information. Second is a system of engagement, which is how people actually discover data and easily make, share, and use maps. And then there's the system of insights. This is the concept of actually performing analysis as well as um, turning data into information that ultimately helps drive better operational decisions. With those three systems in place, all forms of geographic content can be used to develop the digital atlas of your organization. You can create maps for all aspects of the business and it becomes the place where your users go to find authoritative information as an atlas would. Now, as far as use cases goes in the industry, um, with the ArcGIS platform, we generally see these nine common patterns of use. And in this demonstration today, you'll see a little bit of each of these patterns and some updates to some of our capabilities in each of them. These common patterns speak to the diverse technology that WebGIS provides, but ultimately they're applied to business functions, which I've outlined here. These categories reflect the wide variety of applications of GIS in the industry and is by no means comprehensive. Um, by applying those patterns of use, those technology um, trends, you can drive business value across the mining life cycle from exploration to reclamation. The WebGIS platform can support all of these workflows. Uh, in the sense that it is truly an enterprise platform and something that's customizable and it goes beyond uh, just mapping. So with that, I'd like to jump over and just show you a quick uh, demonstration of the ArcGIS platform and, and highlight some new capabilities and features and, and focus on how WebGIS differentiates itself. So I'm starting off the demonstration here in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, if you're not already using ArcGIS Pro, I highly recommend that you give it a try. Uh, one of the most powerful aspects of Pro is that it is truly integrated with WebGIS, making web-based workflows much simpler. ArcGIS Pro is an authoring tool for sharing those data sources to the web, but at the same time, it's also a tool for consuming and viewing web services. Here, I'm looking at a map of uh, the Marigold Mine with some property boundaries, infrastructure outlines, and more. These data sources came from CAD files, which ArcGIS Pro natively supports importing, and right now they're just local. If somebody needs a map, they need to contact me to create a print or PDF map and send it to them. However, with ArcGIS Pro, I can go up to the top share ribbon here and share this map as a web map. I'll provide it a name, 
a summary as well as some tags, and then ultimately just share this with my organization. This will package up all of the layers and share them off to the web. And this is going to be shared to my ArcGIS organization, which you can see at the top right, I'm logged into my ArcGIS for mining organization. Of course, I've got a username and password ensuring that this data is securely shared with just my organization, not the public. By sharing this map, now others can directly interact with the data and always see updates as soon as I make them in ArcGIS Pro. As soon as I update these boundaries, users will see that. So look at where this went. I'm going to open up my web browser and we can go ahead and look at where the data went to. So I've opened up my ArcGIS online homepage and this is where that data went. This is the central location for finding all things related to geospatial data, maps, and web applications. This application comes in two forms, an on-premise one, which is ArcGIS Enterprise, or a software as a service, which is called ArcGIS Online, which I'm using today. Here, I've customized the homepage with our corporate branding, as well as provided access to some of the most commonly requested maps and applications in the center map carousel. At the top right, I'm logged in with those same username and password credentials that I used in ArcGIS Pro, connecting me to my identity across the platform. ArcGIS Online uh, and ArcGIS Enterprise are designed to serve your whole organization. Like I, we saw earlier in the slides, there's those very diverse business functions that we can apply these tools to. And, and you can reflect that with these different groups that you create in your organization. Uh, these are ways for you to secure data within the, within different business units or different operating areas, ensuring that people only have access to the information that they require. We've got our aggregate group, our engineering blasting, operations, environmental, and many more groups. Now to find the map that I just published, I'm gonna to go to my content section where I'll see all of my personal layers, maps, and applications, including this mine operations map that we just created, which I can go ahead and open up in this web map viewer. So we published data. We've seen how the ArcGIS environment can serve a variety of your business uh, by organizing content to groups and customizing that homepage. Here in the map viewer, this is where either a GIS professional or an end user could go to interact with these maps. It's of course something that's fully interactive and dynamic and supports the ability for people to click on features to see what type of features they are with those pop-ups. Now, I could share this URL with end users or make modifications like simply adding some layers to the map. So here I'll search across my organization and I'm gonna use this new capability for content categories. Content categories are ways for you to organize data in your organization uh, to make it even easier for people to find. So I've got categories for exploration, mine operations, investor relations, reclamation and logistics. And if I go into the mine operations one, I've got subcategories for different mines that we operate, including the Marigold mine, which I can then go jump into uh, pages like the blasting category or find infrastructure like roads and see all these different data sets immediately draw on my map. On my map, I added a blasting grid that shows in red areas that have been drilled, uh, purple blasted and green planned blast holes. Uh, and so all these data sources we quickly brought them into the map and in added them here. So I searched across my organization. I can also search the Living Atlas, which is in the collection of Esri curated content, which if I come in here and search for something like geology, for example, I can quickly add the state geologic map compilation. So this is a compilation of all of the different geologic surveys across the US and all of their um, uh, geologic maps into one layer that you can authoritatively reference. I can move it to the bottom, and quickly add uh, transparency to make my map look a little bit nicer here. So just like that, we integrated proprietary data sources, data sources that others have shared with me, as well as public ones. That's really the power of this map viewer. It's a place where you can create customized maps for whatever business workflow or function that you need. When you're done, you can save the map and then the next step really is to build applications. Applications take these maps and wrap them up with extra specialized functionality. To create one, I can use templates that Esri provides to quickly roll out an application in just a matter of seconds here, such as this basic viewer template. 
With this basic viewer template, we add in a couple of extra capabilities, like the ability for me to turn layers on and off. If I wanted to turn those roads on and off or change to turn the boss plan off, I can do that. Or I could change the base map over to one of the Esri or custom base maps that you've configured for your organization. And then finally, the other tool I've provided is this print tool. So straight from the web browser, I can print this map out to a PDF uh, if I need to go then print it on a, an actual printer. Now with ArcGIS Enterprise, you can customize these map print templates that I've created here. This one is just a plain old one with the plain title, date, and, uh, and um, scale bar at the bottom right. But again, this can be customized to put things like your corporate branding and customized map elements. So web applications are low code and no code tools for you to extend maps and put in uh, very specific feature functions that help address workflow. And this was a really simple workflow where we really just created an asset viewing map, right? This is just some core layers that um, everybody could benefit from seeing as part of this, uh, uh, as part of this um, mine operations. So we took data, published it, we created a map, and we created applications. I want to now go look at a couple of applications that are addressing some key technology trends that we're seeing in the industry and highlight some new capabilities that are available within the ArcGIS uh, ecosystem. First, this map that we've created, if we want to take it into the field, that's sometimes you know the biggest value you can get out of this. Give people who are in the mine or in your field the ability to take this right out into, the, into their mobile applications. So using Esri's uh, ArcGIS Explorer, you can take this, this exact map into the field without any modifications. Just open up the application, and because everything's WebGIS based, you'll just see the map available immediately. But oftentimes, you're working in an environment where you don't have internet connection, and need, you need to take this offline. To do that, we've got a new capability where if I go to the item details page for this map and go to the settings of it, I've got a new offline section where I can enable offline mode and create new offline areas for my uh, for my operations. This will load a preview of the map showing me all the different data sources, and then I can start to create new areas. These areas, I can specify the level of detail as well as draw a polygon around them. You notice I'm drawing a polygon that tightly conforms to the geographic extent of my data, ensuring that I get the minimum amount of base map in my map as possible minimizing the overall file size for this offline map that I'm creating. Now, all these data sets that are being created, they update uh, very frequently. Take, for example, those haul roads that we uh, were adding to the map earlier. Those are data sets that update on a nearly daily basis. You can configure updates for these mobile map packages to update on a frequency such as every day, every week, or every month, ensuring that whenever somebody's out in the field, as soon as we get into the office um, or uh, into the, if the place where they have internet connection, they can always download the most recent data and ensure that when they go into the field or into the into the mine, they've always got that most up-to-date map available for them. And no longer users, they won't have to worry about ensuring that they have an updated map. And for a GIS professional, this workflow has been automated. The ArcGIS environment will take care of updating this package every day. Now, in the field, workers might be using this map to navigate to different uh, facilities, or maybe they're navigating to water or fuel tanks that need to be inspected. They could use Survey123 to collect SPCC inspection information for these tanks. And historically, users might perform inspections with paper and pen. And these uh, you know, inspection forms might then get stored away in a cabinet that never gets used again. With WebGIS, you can streamline that using an application like Survey123 to streamline the data from the field directly into the system of record, and then visualize it in a dashboard like this one, where we can see all of the different my, uh, water tank locations as well as fuel tank locations. And, um, and for mobile users, when they're out there collecting information, it gets streamed into here, where then we can go click on specific tanks, see a history of all the inspections, click on one inspection and actually see what data were people capturing in the field, right? What were their answers to questions like, is the containment area free of water? Uh, they say no, and they provided a reason. They said there's a recent rainfall event causing the containment area to contain a little bit of water. 
As well, they provided a picture, which we can quickly see associated with that inspection event. So with WebGIS, you're able to tie the field back into the office with seamless two-way communication, taking maps into the field, enabling them for offline use, but also collecting new data to bring back into the office to support workflows like this environmental SPCC inspection workflow. So mobile is that first trend I wanted to talk about. The second one is investor relations and corporate communications. Here, I'm using the new version of ArcGIS Story Maps to show current and future plans for this Marigold mine. If you look at just about any PDF or paper investor report, you'll find a map in it. These Story Maps in WebGIS enables you to provide dynamic interactive experiences to tell stories that you would tell through those reports. A uh, quick disclaimer, this application is uh, completely for demonstration. Uh, it doesn't re represent necessarily the true facts of the Marigold mine. Um, so just a quick disclaimer there that I wanted to put in. Uh, I start my application off by providing a stunning panoramic view of the mine and a title to catch our investors' attention. As I scroll down, I get a map that's powered by all of those data sources that I just published. But I've also provided a narrative that it conveyed through these windows here. It tells me a little bit about the name, of course, of the mine, the total probable mineral reserves, the average grade, our total cumulative production to date uh, in 2019, and then the amount of money planned for exploration in 2022. So these statistics are trying, we're trying to ultimately catch investors' attention and, and inform them of what's going on. I've also provided an arrow here on the right that takes the users to the next part of this application, where we're highlighting different expansion areas, talking about new land acquisitions, um, as well as conveying some of those similar um, uh, statistics that we were looking at earlier. So this is really all about telling a story about your assets. And because this is all hosted in the web, a story map like this can be embedded directly into your corporate websites or shared with investors at conferences and meetings. Now, the third trend I want to look at is imagery. And this one is a web scene that we've created for the surface of a mine, but it also has the potential to go below the surface, visualizing geologic surfaces and, and drill holes and much more. This model was generated using drone imagery and photogram photogrammetric tools in Esri's site scan for ArcGIS platform. And in an ever-changing environment, drones can help to monitor the safety of haul roads, tailing slopes and monitor the progress of your mind. And because this is again, all WebGIS based, anybody can work with this. You don't need a specialized desktop software product. Instead, just send them directly to this 3D web application. Now, finally, the last trend I wanna look at is real time. The number of sensors that we're capturing data from in mining is growing rapidly. From piezometers to temperature sensors and vehicle GPS sensors, all of these data sets present a challenge to, to stream into the map, but they also present an opportunity, new information products that can bring business value. Here, I'm using Analytics for IoT, which is Esri's new real-time and big data capability that's completely hosted in ArcGIS Online. I'm streaming in real-time haul trek locations to visualize them directly here on the map, as well as showing me um, dots showing me where they've historically been. So these have been simulated, of course, at a higher speed for this demonstration. Analytics for IoT not only enables you to bring these data feeds in, but it also gives you the tools to perform analysis in real time and over massive volumes of millions or billions even of data points. And using this real-time data, you can then improve worker safety, manage your operations more efficiently. And, uh, and WebGIS makes these tools, gives you these tools to combine all of these different data sets. Um, we're layering in all of our core asset information. You could layer in imagery, and then you've built a really comprehensive application that breaks down silos that may have existed between these disparate databases and systems. So just to recap what we looked at, we saw how you can publish data from ArcGIS Pro to create a map and then ultimately create applications. Those applications can range from imagery in real time to mobile and analytics. And as you build out your organization's content, you can address different workflows across the entire line of business. And um, there becomes a point though, where you need to help users find what's out there. How do we actually you know, um, 
help people find what solutions have been developed, deployed and make this process of finding the maps as frictionless as possible. The workflows that I went through today were clearly very diverse and it's a lot of information. And for many of your end users, that could be overwhelming. So to provide um, easy to use applications to find what users need, you can use what's called ArcGIS Enterprise Sites or ArcGIS Hub. Each of these are technologies that allow you to create customized home pages for your organization. To access it, I can go to the app launcher up here at the top right, where you could launch into the ArcGIS Hub if you're in ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise Sites if you're in ArcGIS Enterprise. You can launch into the authoring application. I've also customized this app launcher though to provide a link directly to the hub that I've already created just for this demonstration. Here, this takes me to that central landing page for my, for my end users. It's a tailored experience, no matter what business unit or operating area people belong to. When I jump into this application first, I see at the top right a header that says ArcGIS for mining, and I've got some links out to different resources, resources that could be frequently asked questions or contact the GIS team, really whatever you want to put in here, you can. I've branded my organization as the geospatial portal, and by branding it, I can uh, you know, have users identify with it as more than just the GIS, but it's actually, it's got a name and something that people can um, learn to know it by. And we can use that to market the system to the company and grow usage and users will really begin to, to identify with the system. Now, oftentimes users will come to this page looking for a specific application or the ability, um, or maybe they're looking for a data set. So they can always just search here, right in the search bar, using the metadata associated with all of your system of record data, it'll search across your entire system and find data sources that they need. But you could also provide just featured maps and applications, much like you did on the homepage. Now, one of the biggest benefits, though, of ArcGIS Enterprise Sites is this ability to create more tailored experiences for different audiences. Somebody in your exploration group has different needs than somebody in operations. And if I clicked on these links, it would take me to a customized page just for that business unit that has the maps, applications, and data that they need. And finally, I've added a section to highlight the work done by the GIS team for those who are not familiar with, the GI, with GIS. And we can use this as a section to, uh, um, to educate and extend an offer to support workflows. So these sites are designed to make your enterprise GIS system more friendly and easier for people to find content. End users can bookmark this site for quick access to those critical maps and applications that span all of those workflows. So just to quickly summarize a lot of what we've talked about, ArcGIS enables you to build a web mapping platform that supports all aspects of your business, spanning from exploration to reclamation. And it all starts with Pro, where a GIS professional or anybody really in your organization can publish data to the web. From there, you build web maps and applications using low code and no code templates that span imagery, mobile, IoT, analytics, and more. And then finally, you build a customized central portal where all users find and access the content and information that they need to do their job. To transition over to the next presenters for this webinar, I wanna talk really briefly about open data and how it relates to what we just saw. Many public agencies are leveraging the exact same technology that we just saw to transform how they interact with their stakeholders. And open data is this idea that data should be freely accessible to anybody. Open data enables organizations to make their data widely accessible for mining organizations who need this data for exploration or permitting and more. Here I've highlighted just a few examples around the world of users who are using ArcGIS to provide these open data uh, access points. And specifically in these cases are, or these examples are for mineral resources and geological data. So I highly recommend if you get a chance to go view these applications in their environments to see what types of excellent workflows they're providing. Now to show us how they've deployed this technology and embraced open data, uh, I'd like to transition over to Rachel from the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology and Lucia from the Nevada Division of Minerals. Whether you work at a similar governmental organization, a commercial company, or as a consultant looking for new ways to deliver information products to your stakeholders, you'll find value in seeing how they've deployed these tools. 
So with that, I'd like to hand it back over to them. Hello, everyone. This is Rachel Mikander, a cartographer and geologist with the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology. And this is Lucia Patterson, a GIS specialist and geologist with the Nevada Division of Minerals. In this presentation, we will discuss each of our open data sites, data being shared by each agency, and introduce a new web application that was developed to help explorationists identify and discover mineral resources throughout Nevada. So let's begin. Open data sites have not only opened the door to a new public data resource, but have also created a nexus where many pieces of data can be placed in one location and formatted to meet the needs of and assist people in specific industries. It is data that can be freely used and reused by anyone. Open data allows users to search these data sets and download files as needed. They can be downloaded as a shapefile, KML, geodatabases, or spreadsheets, and all data sets can be filtered by some attributes. It also provides a location to share web applications, story maps, videos, and other external resources. Let's start off by taking a quick tour of our open data sites. The Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology and the Nevada Division of Minerals each have their own separate open data sites. The Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology, or NBMG, is a research and public service unit of the University of Nevada and is a state geological survey. NBMG is part of the Mackey School of Earth Sciences and Engineering within the College of Science at the University of Nevada, Reno. NBMG scientists conduct research, publish reports on mineral resources, engineering geology, environmental geology, hydrogeology, and geologic mapping. The NBMG Open Data Site was launched in the summer of 2017 and hosts a variety of scientific data layers and resources. This open data site is catered towards scientific research and providing users access to publicly available free data sets. Let's take a quick tour of the NBMG Open Data Site, Pages and Data. So here we see the home page of the NBMG Open Data Site. As Matt mentioned earlier in his presentation, Users can come here and click in the search bar to search for specific data sets that they are interested in, such as minerals or geology, or maybe even faults or geo, geohazard data. Scrolling down the page, we have our disclaimer, a section for exploring NBMG data. All of our NBMG web applications can be found here. We have four select applications linked right here, and user can click on the Explore More apps to take them to a page where they can view all of our web applications with some information about each app, as well as a few story maps. Let's head back home. Continuing down the page, we have a section de dedicated to additional resources, both at NBMG, so the Great Basin Center for Geothermal Energy, our Science Sample and Records Library, information on education and outreach, and NBMG research. Continuing down the page, we have a section devoted for other public GIS data and geoscience websites. Users can find links to other open data pages such as NDOM, NDOM, excuse me, NDEP, or Tahoe Open Data, Carson City Open Data, or a variety of links to counties. We have a section about NBMG and preserving and sharing our data sets. Let's head back up to the top and click on one of the tab, one of the buttons to explore NBMG data. Let's look at mineral resources. This takes the user to a subpage where they can learn more about mineral resources and the data that we have available for free at the Bureau of Mines and Geology. We have select web applications here. Publications and additional data can be found further down the page. And if a user wants to simply locate mineral resources data, they can click on this tab, which will, ta will take them to a page where all of our data sets that have been tagged with mineral resources can be found. Clicking on industrial minerals, it will take the user to a page where they can view the distribution of industrial minerals on the map up at the top, check out the data, and even filter by some data sets, as well as download them. So let's head back to the presentation. Since creation of map and data services are an important part of NBMG modernization and many data sets were already freely available, 
but were not, they were not easily searchable or accessible prior to launching our open data site. Much of our data was scattered in different portions of our website, and we recognized the need to create a centralized location for our publicly available data. We also wanted to be able to share our data and make it easy to discover and download for both non-GIS and GIS users alike. As the State Geological Survey, we want to engage stakeholders, government entities, students, and the public. So why is open data useful? Well, for one, it helps make our free data more discoverable. It's separate from our, our paid GIS files, which are available from our publication sales office online shopping cart. It also enables the sharing of NBMG data across platforms and between different agencies and the public. And it provides a centralized location for searching NBMG data and finding other resources, including web applications, publications, and many other digital products. It has allowed us to go from a somewhat cluttered and information heavy website format shown here in the top image to a more streamlined, easy to use platform for discovering data shown here in the bottom image and what you saw in the demo. Some of the challenges we encountered in developing the NBMG open data site included data organization and cleanup. Before creating an open data page, we had to organize and clean up our data to make it easily discoverable. This included organizing the data on the back end, as well as determining how best to categorize it on the front end. This was a long and involved process. Much of it had been completed in previous server migrations, but a large amount still had to be done prior to launching the open data page. For metadata, before publishing our services, we had to make sure the metadata was sufficient and tagged appropriately. Many of these data sets had been created at one point or another without metadata. Current metadata was added to each of the services and to ArcGIS Online. And this process made it much easier for us to credit our data sets. We also needed to address disclaimers and copyright statements. This was one of the more challenging items on the to-do list since we had to work with several other people within the Bureau and at the university in order to come up with an appropriate disclaimer and determine if we could use the UNR copyright. In addition to the copyright and disclaimer, we have included the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License in all of our free data sets. Once data organization was completed, we published the data from ARC Desktop to our ArcGIS server, which is hosted by our university IT department. We then added the services to ArcGIS Online from our REST service directory. Different groups were created in ArcGIS Online to feed into the open data pages. These groups were identified as open data groups. Each data set was assigned an open data group depending on the data categorization. Currently, we have seven groups with a total of 92 data sets. This has increased since the beginning of 2018 from six groups and 50 data sets. The result was a more robust and organized location for searching NBMG geospatial data. This included a better public interface that is easily updated and maintained. It also helped make NBMG more relevant as a state, ge as a state geological survey. Our free data sets are now easier to find, filter, and download and our web applications, which had previously been hosted on a content-heavy maps and data page hidden among other documents and links, are now presented in an organized format. Bottom line, this platform has made our data easier to discover and share with our users. Now, let me hand this over to Lucia for a tour of the NDOM open data site. The mission of the Nevada Division of Minerals is to assist in the responsible exploration for and the production of minerals, oil, gas, and geothermal energy, which are economically beneficial to the state. This is the Nevada Division of Minerals public platform for exploring and downloading our open data. Our open data site was launched in the winter of 2017. Performing land research prior to staking a claim has been challenging and indirect. This does not result from lack of data, but rather from unclear locations of challenging input parameters for, and complex presentation of the data. Our open data site has evolved to be a data resource and a user-friendly utility for portions of land research in Nevada. NDOM's open data site hosts pages dedicated to certain topics. These topics include lithium claims, active mining claims, notices plans and historic mining claims, 
commodities and occurrences, land issues, dissolved mineral resource exploration, along with education and outreach. All data is hosted on ArcGIS Online. Each page has its own interactive ESRI web mapping application that has been configured to enhance user interaction. The pop-ups are easily configured using a combination of the data hosted in the feature service, arcade expressions, and URL links to external sources. The lighter green text indicates where data is being pulled out of the attribute table. Orange text indicates where arcade expressions have been utilized. Dark green text shows where the text is linked to a URL, and red text indicates a URL and arcade expression combination. There are resources online to help write arcade expressions that are relatively easy to follow. Widgets available for web mapping applications add to an enjoyable user experience. We have implemented the search, add data, and filter widgets in most of our web mapping applications. The search bar can be configured to search based off fields present in the feature services displayed in the map. For example, in this map, the search bar has been configured so the user can enter the township range and section into the search bar, and when they click the magnifying glass, the map will zoom to that section. Using the Add Data widget, the user can add their own data or other data on the web to the map for analysis. The filter widget can be configured so the user can easily display relevant data within a data set. Simply put, time equals money. By providing data, users don't have to go look for it or call us asking to supply the data. It saves time and money for us and them. By providing interactive maps to consumers without the need for specialized software means the consumer saves money and we save money because we are not generating maps and doing analyses for them. In our particular case, Utilizing tools available such as customized pop-ups has allowed us to simplify the land research process for us as well as outside novice and professional entities. For example, when completing ownership research in the case of patented mining claims, a minimum of 15 steps were required to delineate an owner. Now, through the use of open data, web apps, and pop-ups, 15 steps have been narrowed down to five steps. Fewer steps means less time wasted, means less money spent. Open data sites have also enabled agencies to better organize data, making it easier to merge data sets together under one application. The Nevada Mineral Explorer is just that, a nexus of data from several agencies functioning within one application. When using this application, users can download specific data sets, save maps to PDF, search layer information, add data, and view data without any special GIS skills or software, and all within one application. This web app also allows users to leverage pop-ups to gather information on mining claims, mining districts, geologic features, and many other data sets relevant to exploration in Nevada. Data in this application are organized into nine different categories. Each category is depicted with its own unique symbol and contains various layers hosted by both NBMG and NDOM that users can explore, search, and download. Categories include occurrences and production, exploration and development, mineral resources, geology, geophysical, geochemistry, mining claims, technical reports, and reference data. The source of the layer is indicated in parentheses next to the layer name within the application. The Nevada Mineral Web Explorer application has brought data sets that are hosted on the NBMG and, open, and NDOM open data sites into one user-friendly application. It is intended to be a one-stop shop to show what data sets are available and a tool to help explorationists identify and discover mineral resources throughout Nevada. GIS data were gathered from NBMG, NDOM, the BLM, the USGS, and the US Forest Service. This web app can be accessed through both the NDOM and NBMG open data sites. 
Now I'll pass it over to Lucia to give us a quick tour of the Nevada Mineral Web App. The Nevada Mineral Explorer is data heavy, so it may take a minute to load. But after it loads, it will look similar to this, with Nevada's active mine and the energy producers layer displayed and the information widget enabled both off to the far right. Here we can also see the map key function, which we will click to display the legend. The change base map widget is next, the print to PDF widget and the measure, measure widget are all over in this area of the map. In the top center of the application, we can see links to the FAQ page, along with links to the Nevada Bureau of Mines and the Nevada Division of Minerals open data sites. Moving our attention to the top right-hand side of the application, we can see several icons, which all but the last three correspond with the data categories mentioned by Rachel. These categories include mineral, I'm sorry, these, these categories include layers with information on mineral occurrences and deposits, notice plan and drill projects, precious metal and industrial mineral deposits data along with oil, gas, and geothermal drill holes, layers relating to geology, geophysical data, geochemical data, active and historic mining claim data, technical reports or links to the 43101 reports, and reference data, which includes relevant boundaries and um, indexes as they relate to Nevada. The final three widgets off to the right of it available to users include the select, the add, and the download data tools. We will navigate to the exploration and development category and turn on the mining plans and select a point. When the plan is selected, the pop-up will be generated, which gives some general information on the plan, which includes the PLSS description, the commodity of interest, the case disposition, when the case was established, the total case acres, customer information, and links to external reports. Pop-ups in many of the layers are configured the same, utilizing a user-friendly interface and links to other data sources or external reports. Back to the presentation. In conclusion, open data sites are not only a source of data, but also a utility for research and can serve as a platform where agencies with commonalities can bring data together to better assist their data consumers. Web mapping applications enable users to perform basic analysis and eliminate the requirement for specialized software and additional data files. Customizable pop-ups add to a nice user experience and can be configured to help the user to run analyses without the knowledge of reports and query designs. Open data sites and web mapping applications allow the novice to perform research and enable the professionals to complete the job more efficiently, resulting in increased time efficiencies and significant cost savings. We would like to thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Rachel, and thank you, Lucia. Very, very well done. Uh, Matt, as the same to you, uh, very well done. Uh, appreciate it to everyone. And judging from the questions that are coming in, um, I know it's been very well received. So uh, now we're going to transition to the question and answer session. Um, I'm going to encourage you to continue to share your questions in that GoToWebinar dialog box. and. As I mentioned earlier, uh, a recording and answers to all the questions will be uh, provided to registrants you know, shortly after we're done. So to start, I think I'm going to throw um, two questions over to Lucia and Rachel. Um, and this is summarized from a couple questions I'm getting. Um, um, re related to the level of effort it took to, to build both the, the open data sites can we assume you had large staffs and a lot of people helping you build out this effort? So actually, no, this is this is Rachel with the Bureau of Mines and Geology. Um, 
the open data site, that was an effort that I um, primarily undertook starting around uh, winter of 2017. Um, I, I built that site out with the um, Esri Open Data Platform content management system. Um, and I did, once the site was built, I was able to get some feedback from different uh, people throughout the Bureau, but most of that was, was, done, by, was done by me. And this is Lucia. Um, I echo Rachel. I deployed the open data site, configured the open data site, published all the layers. I'm the only one with um, their hands in the pot on that. But as far as ideas, the ideas and the maps came from several people within our agency. Perfect. So even with a, a small staff and a, and a tight budget, these things can be uh, spun up and, and produced fairly easily. Um, the so Nevada Division of Minerals only has 11 people total and one <laughs> GIS person. Great. I, I think that's a, a great point to, to highlight is that you don't necessarily need a lot of lot of uh, staff to to produce these. And, and let's follow that up with, with another question to, to the Rachel and Lucia. Um, what's what's next? What's the roadmap for the project? Um, the Division of Minerals, so our mission is to, we provide data as part of our mission to um, assist in the responsible exploration for minerals in Nevada. So ours is kind of guided by what the people want, what comes up next, what is the demand for, what questions people are asking. So ours is pretty open, fluid, and dynamic. Um, and for the Bureau of Mines and Geology, while we are not as small as Endom is, we do have about 30 people um, working for us. Most are um, faculty geologists, and um, our the group that I work within consists of three cartographers at the moment. Um, outside of that, we have a lot of data. Um, we are kind of the data repository for geologic information in Nevada being the State Geological Survey. And we get a lot of um, hard copies, maps, reports donated to us, um, which in turn all need to be sorted through and scanned. And so we still, we have a backlog of a lot of data out there that we are working and will continue to work to get these data sets onto our open data site. Perfect. Thank you for that. Those are those, uh, the questions and, and the answers. So let's go ahead and, and ask a couple to Matt. And Matt, maybe I can combine these into what probably is, is one answer. Two questions, one answer. Um, was everything you showed today um, in ArcGIS online? And then the follow-up question or the, the partner question is, when are those offerings um, let me check that. When are those offline maps coming to ArcGIS Enterprise? Yeah, so um, yeah, everything I showed today was using ArcGIS Online. Um, we tried to completely stay in that environment to highlight some of the new features that are there, especially ones that historically have been only in our on-premise software, like the real-time capabilities. So yeah, everything was in ArcGIS Online today. Um, and then I think the, the offline map question is related to how we took that map we created and, and created that offline area that updates on like a, a regular basis. So that's a new capability that's in the most recent version of ArcGIS Enterprise, ArcGIS Enterprise 10.8. And it's that ability to create a, an irregular shape that sort of conforms to just your boundary of your data, not just like a square area, and then to be able to schedule it to update on that reoccurring basis. So it's okay. the most recent version of ArcGIS Enterprise. Okay, great. Thanks for that answer. Let's see. I'm trying to sort through these questions as they come in you know, real time. So speaking of real time, I have a couple questions on your IoT um, demo. And the question I'm seeing most often is, how did you get those real-time haul trucks in the map? I think what they're they're asking is, is where's the data coming from? Yeah, uh, so 
I used the again the, the product it's analytics for IoT. It's a new capability with ArcGIS Online. Historically, we've always had Geo Event Server that would be able to handle this on premise, of which many of our customers have deployed to integrate real time sensor data. In the, in this case today, I brought in just vehicles, but it could also be used for sensors like like I mentioned, piezometers, pressures, tank volumes. Uh, really any type of real-time data source. For the truck specifically, what Analytics for IoT is designed to do is to tap into another system, right? So we don't have the sensors for the vehicles, but we have the tools needed to tap into another system that is capturing that data. And and then we're able to synthesize it with other real-time data and other, and other contextual information, right? So we collect the real-time streams coming from, say, a vehicle tracking platform, and then we bring it into a map and layer on other data sources to build another, uh, a bigger system that combines many diff different data sources. Excellent. Uh, I'm very excited. We're getting a lot of questions coming in, and I, I think they're piling up a little bit. Uh, so with, with the questions we've asked already, um, and the amount that are coming in, I think it's best that we answer the rest of these um, in the follow-up email. I'm getting quite a few on the real-time aspects of this, but also on the producing of the, the widgets on the open data sites. But again, they're, they're fairly detailed, so I believe uh, they'll be best to uh, respond to in detail in the follow-up. So with that, um, if you do have further questions related to this webinar, um, please feel free to reach out uh, by email to me or any of the participants today. And any general questions regarding Esri's approach to mining solutions and, and workflows, I'm ha uh, happy to answer those as well. I'd like to call your attention to several um, resources and activities before we close out, um, as many of you may be aware, the Esri International User Conference is virtual this year. And if you're a current Esri customer, your registration is free. If you'd like to register, the registration information is shown on the link um, on the screen now. And I, I very much encourage you to join and participate um, on the MUG, with the MUG on LinkedIn. So uh, feel free to join that, um, present your or pose your topics for future webinars there. Uh, please feel free to explore the Esri Mining GeoNet site. There is also um, a lot of useful resources on ArcGIS and mining there as well. We uh, make all the previous mining related webinars available to you on, the, on YouTube. And there's a catalog of past webinars that can be found again at that URL uh, shown on the screen. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for attending the webinar, especially Rachel and Lucia for their participation and everyone for giving us their time today. Thanks, safety first, have a great day.